This video is brought to you by Harago.com, a trades-only platform helping you find the right job or the right candidate. Harago.com, best in trade. Okay, so we have this cool air condensing unit. It's got a scroll compressor. It's a digital scroll. Inside here is a superheat controller, which controls the EEV downstairs, the electronic expansion valve. Now you did see the condenser fan motor struggle to start up. Now I believe it's the capacitor that's causing this problem, but the capacitor is tucked back in there. This is for a critical piece of equipment, so we can't shut this down right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait for it to cycle off. It usually cycles off for about 10-15 minutes, and I'm going to pull this cage off. What I've done is I've already got the, the nuts off here. When it cycles down, we'll shut down the power. We'll pull the cage off. We'll get in there to check the capacitor, make sure that it's okay, but I have a feeling it's not going to be. All right, so the meter is set to the capacitance portion of the meter, and I'm reading 1.7 microfarads. Now, I am going to have to either get in there, pull that cap out and see what it's rated for, or we can check the motor right here to see if we can figure out what it's rated for there, but I think that's low right off the bat. I've never seen a run cap for a motor like this that is at 1.7 microfarads. All right, so I was able to get in there. That is a 7.5 microfarad cap. So we are at the bottom end of that, 1.7. So this cap needs to be changed out. So the fan motor in here is a 575 single phase. All right, half horsepower. I don't know how long this has been running like this for, so the motor may have suffered some damage. So I'm not opposed to changing this motor along with the cap to get this thing running properly. The other thing we're noticing with this machine is that there's a lot of oil around it, a lot of oil buildup, and there's also some over here on some of these lines. So we got to leak check this and make sure that we have no leaks on this particular unit, but capacitor and fan motor 100% is getting changed on this and we'll leak check it to see if we can find any leaks in the meantime. So we're gonna change this motor. I don't like what the run cap did to this thing over time. Here's the fan blade. Okay, it came off quite easily actually. I didn't have to use a puller or anything. I just pulled it off with, with my hands. So we're gonna pull this motor out. I couldn't get the specs off of it the other day because I couldn't shut the unit down long enough to pull it out because it, it had to run. This is scheduled. It's got some information here. It's got some, the voltage, it's got the amperage, it's got the horsepower, but it doesn't have the RPM or the frame size and I'm gonna pull this out and get that information better yet I'm probably gonna take it right to the supplier just to match it up um, like for like so let's get to that so in a lot of these videos that you watch on YouTube you don't see stuff happening that's not supposed to happen so I was leaning in in here now the cat was mounted back there such a, a silly place for the cap to be mounted and as I was leaning in these uh, flexible hoses were mounted and I actually leaned up a little bit too hard and one broke right off. Luckily for me, there was cores in here in both of these and I just pulled them off here and we didn't have a, a lot of gas leave, it was just uh, a little bit of vapor. But I wanted to change these anyway because look, look at all this dirt, potential oil that's been leaking out of here when these things have been running. So these are very inexpensive and very cheap so I'm gonna get these replaced as well but just to show you what can happen on a job when things aren't going so well but luckily for me uh, this wasn't too bad so things keep getting better here this crankcase heater has also failed so we have a motor a crankcase heater and some flexible lines that we got to replace on this machine to bring it back up to running status so I'm gonna to try to get this on order and replace this as well when we do the other stuff here fan motor and the flexible lines from the pressure switches okay here's the new motor here and the first thing you want to do with any motor is match up the specs 575 60 Hertz single phase half horsepower is really what we're concerned about but we're also concerned about the RPM now the other motor there was 1100 this one is 1075 so we're only off 25 RPM, not a big deal. So we're gonna throw this in, get moving. 
So this motor has a ground wire on it, but it's not long enough to reach back to where it was grounded in the cabinet. So I'm just going to attach my own here and I will ground it where it was grounded previously just so I don't need to put a, uh, a wire connector in the middle somewhere. So the wires from the motor are not long enough to run all the way back to the panel here. It'd be nice if we could run them all the way back, but what I've done here is I've, instead of using like twist on connectors or wire nuts, I've used these male to female stake-ons, insulated ones. They're really good, they're really tight, they don't come undone. What we need to do before we put the blade on is verify that these, because this is a, a motor that can go in both directions, depending on what you do with these with these uh, leads right here. So we need to turn this on and make sure the motor's running in the right direction. And then we can bundle these up nice and neat with wire ties or zip ties and put the blade on. So let's see. So the motor is running and it's running clockwise, so we can button all this up. So this is probably why I go through about a thousand or several thousand zip ties in a year is because I like my wiring as neat as possible, especially when you have excessive wire. Now it's always a good idea, at least for me anyway, to keep that excessive wire. I don't like when the wire just fits and you don't have extra because one day you're going to come along, you're going to have a melted terminal or some burnt wiring and you're not going to have enough. So when you have the excessive wire there, you can cut off any damaged wire and you have it. So just make sure it's nice and neat. The magic doesn't really happen until you cut those ends off. So our wire ties, zip ties, whatever you call them, they're all cut, we're all ready to rock with this blade on. So the bore size in this blade is actually too big for this shaft, so what we use is a bushing which slides on and the set screw goes right through that, that hole right there and the bushing basically meets right up with the bore of the shaft so it sits nice and flush. So yeah, we had some leaking hoses and I did break one by accident, but we have some replacements, some, some better ones, some yellow jacket hoses that are the same size. They got the same 90 here to go into the fitting of the pressure switches. So we're gonna get going on these right now and we're gonna use a little bit of nylog as well to help seal these up. Now we don't need to go crazy with the nylog. We just need a little bit on the seat right here okay I'm not so worried about the threads on the seat is where the the two pieces meet up the piece from the hose that connects the connection point and this piece right here that's where they meet up that's where we need to seal the fitting Really, that's all, that's all we need. So for the other side, this is where it doesn't get tricky, but we need to do something a little bit extra. See, we have cores right there. So in order for the hose to work, for the pressure switch to sense pressure, we need to depress that core. And I have a little core depressor right here that was in the other hoses that we're gonna have to slide back down into that hose. Okay, so the, the hoses are on, the low pressure goes to the suction line and the discharge line goes to the high pressure switch. Now, what I did was, is I just kept with the natural flow of the way that the, the tubing was sitting, all right, just so I don't put any stress on these these stubs right here coming out these quarter inch stubs I don't want to put stress on them so I just took the natural flow just in order to prevent that stress so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna leak check all the fittings with some big blue I brought up the dauber bottle today the big blue and the dauber bottle and uh, let it set in for 10 minutes or so and I'm not seeing any leaks so I'll give it another few minutes and I think we're good to go on these. All right, so we're up and running, fans on. We got our, our hoses all connected up. And the last thing we wanna do is we wanna check the amp draw of the fan. And I'm picking up 0.8 amps on a fan that's rated for 
FLA. So we are good here. This one's in the books. Happy HVACing.